welcome to Faith Matters. What a time, Jen. We had last week talking about the Holy Spirit and today we are carrying on. Yes, we are. And we want to thank every single one of you that have emailed us concerning this series. Andre, it has been such a joy to hear how speaking about the Holy Spirit and the truth of the Holy Spirit from what the Word of God says about Him has brought such a depth of revelation in your hearts concerning the person of God, the person of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. And, you know, it just overwhelms me at how uh, full of joy you are. Just the, the responses in the emails saying that you have really learned to accept and receive and embrace the Holy Spirit right. as never before because you suddenly found out that you can do that. He's not just a power. He's not just a force. He is a person who wants you to know Him and feel Him and understand Him and work and cooperate with Him in your walk with Jesus. So we're so excited about learning more about the Holy Spirit and uh, we can't wait to share more with you this program. That's right. So stay tuned with us, okay? Wherever you are watching from, it's going to be a great 30 minutes. And we just want to flow on with what God has already started to release about the person of the Holy Spirit. Remember, get those emails to us. The email address is on the screen, fm at myfaithtv.com, fm at myfaithtv.com. That's the email address for you to use. We want to hear from you. Get those emails to us. But stay with us. We're coming right back and we're getting on to the person of the Holy Spirit. Well, there you have it. We are back with you. And uh, I trust you are ready, Jen. We're going to get straight into the Word of the Lord. We are dealing on the person of the Holy Spirit. We've done some programs already and it's going great. People are loving it. The power of God is evident and uh, just His presence. So come on, let's recap a little bit. Uh, we spoke about the Holy Spirit is a person. We spoke about Him having a personality. Uh, 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 just we spoke about our intellect and the will and emotions. That we, we spoke about how we need to receive the Holy Spirit when we, well, we do receive Him when we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Exactly. And um, what is so wonderful is we learned that not only is the Holy Spirit a person, like yeah. you said, with an intellect, with emotions, with a will. He is also what the Bible says He is. We read about how He is, the Bible called, it says in the book of John, how He is our comforter, He is our counselor, He is our helper, He is our standby, He is our intercessor and our advocate, our strengthener. He takes the role of someone who is there to stand with us in our walk with God. Yeah. And if you remember when Jesus spoke to his disciples, he said to them, because they were like obviously feeling completely uh, stranded or, or uh, at a loss because up until that point, they always had Jesus as they go to. You know, they could, for anything they went through, they could lean on Jesus. They could ask Him questions. They could follow, uh, hang on every word that He spoke. They could see Him operate in the power of God. It was, it was remarkable for them to have the flesh and blood, yes. Jesus with them. And I know that so many Christians say, oh, if only we could have lived in those days where Jesus was on this earth and we could live with Him and, and walk with Him and be with God, you know. Uh, and then the most amazing thing is how the Bible says that Jesus said, no, but wait, I'm going and I'm going to send the right. Holy Spirit yeah. so that Instead of you having one flesh and blood person with you, now you will have my spirit inside of you. That's right. Everybody inside of every born again child of God is the living spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit. He's not a flesh and blood here where we, there's a limitation, but He is in us. He's part of us. He's one with us. And He is always going to be there. He is our go-to. That's right. <laughs> he is our go-to right. for anything in this life. And what is so remarkable about Him is that He is so interested in every detail of your life, everything that makes you happy, everything that upsets you. He wants to be a part of everything in your life because 
He is the one who created you. He is the one who formed you in your mother's womb. He is the one who before the foundation of the earth already had a plan for you and a purpose for you. So he knows you better than you know yourself and he loves you so much that he wants to come inside of you or while he is inside of you, be the one that dominates your life, that you can live in the fullness that he destined you to walk in. That's right, Jen. You, you know, there's nothing like him as your teacher. Yes. Nothing like him as just that one that sticks closer than a brother. The Holy Spirit is real. He is evident and he is a person that wants to develop a very special walk with you in a relationship. The same way that you and I have a relationship, that's the same way the Holy Spirit wants to have a relationship with each and every one of us. Exactly. So come on, let's let's talk a little bit today. Uh, we've recapped a little bit of what we've been saying and, and I want us today to go a little bit further. I want us to look at some scripture and uh, you, you need to understand the Faith Matters programs are designed in such a way that you get a full understanding of the Word of God. Yes. We, we want to just uh, kind of break it down. We want to lay it out. We want you to have a clear leading and a guiding and an understanding of the truth and the revelation of the Word of God. Let's look uh, a little bit because we, we're going to talk today about the Holy Spirit only moves by the will of the Father. That's right. And he loves Jesus. Absolutely Let's loves talk Jesus. about that a little bit. Well, um, we know that whenever Jesus, whatever Jesus did yes. on this earth, he made it very clear that he only did what his father showed him to do or told him to do. Right. So he lived in an intimate communication, an intimate relationship with his father. Now the Holy Spirit is exactly the same. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit, just as Jesus only operated and did what his father told him to do, the Holy Spirit does exactly the same thing. Yeah. He will always glorify Jesus and he will always do and operate as the father in instructs him to operate. He is the most wonderful third That's person right. of the Godhead, tying that relationship and intimacy in and including us in part of that, mm. uh, which is to me just excites me so much because it's not as though it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit uh, who are one. He has incorporated us into that as well. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. You are part of that. You are not God, but you have God in you and that to me is the most remarkable gift and inheritance that we could have ever asked or wished for or dreamed of and that's what Jesus is saying let's look at John chapter 16 verse 13 and 15 and I'm reading from the Amplified Classic Bible it says but when he Jesus is speaking when he the spirit of truth the truth giving spirit comes he will guide you into all truth the whole full truth for he will not speak his own message on his own authority, but he will tell whatever he hears from the Father and he will give the message that has been given to him and he will announce and declare to you the things that are to come that will happen in the future. And he will honor and glorify me. The Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus uh, because he will take off and receive and draw upon what is mine and will reveal, declare, disclose, transmit it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. Mm. That is what I meant when I said that He, the Holy Spirit, will take the things that are mine and will reveal, declare, disclose, transmit it to you. Do you know what that means? There is nothing, nothing that God has or knows that He doesn't want to share with us. Yeah. I mean, Andre, that's remarkable. That's, that's, that's absolutely amazing. I mean, just think about it. God wants you blessed. God wants you to walk in every area of prosperity, goodness, blessing, wholeness, healing, every area of your life. God wants to disclose all of His... The uh, depth of the, who He the, is. The, the secrets, if I can say it that way. In other words, He doesn't want them to be secret anymore. He calls them mysteries. All right. He, he wants from the pages of this Word of God that represents who the character of God is, He wants that revealed to you. 
that there can be a clear understanding that you don't ever have to doubt any longer. You don't ever have to uh, hide from it. You don't ever have to wonder inside of your heart again, well, you know, what is this really like? Or who is this individual or this person? Or who is God? No, no. He wants the Holy Spirit to reveal everything to you. About himself. About himself. Now, Jen, isn't the thing I love about that is that cuts against tradition. It cuts against religion. It, It cuts against, I mean, think about it. Every single thing that separates us from God, that that man has tried to get in the way of, the Holy Spirit says, no, no, I want you to know who God is. And I want to be the one to, to reveal you. it to yeah, you. Yeah, come I, on. I, just, I love that about the Lord. I just, I'm so excited about who He is and even more, I'm excited about how much He wants us to know Him and how much He wants to reveal Himself to Him. And you know what is also amazing? It's not just to know everything about Him, Andre. Yeah. He says He wants to reveal to us the things that are in the future. That's right. He, he, it's not like, oh, well, with God, it's on a need to know basis. Do you know what He says? You ask me, I'll reveal it to you. I'll show you. I want to show you the promises. I want to, I want to tell you about your future. I, I want you to understand that. That's the point. Isn't that awesome? Your future, God has in the palm of His hand, and He wants to disclose that to you. That is what relationship is all about. Now, understand when you are distant, when you don't have a relationship, and when you're trying to put something or someone in the middle of your relationship between you and God, you miss that point of the Holy Spirit. That's what I love about this. It's not going into some closed off little room and uh, saying, I have sinned and this is what I've done and, and what traditions of man have, have robbed us from. That's not God's purpose. That's not His plan. He wants you to have a straight, open communication with Him one-to-one through the person of the Holy yes. Spirit. And I mean, we even spoke about that last week, about the curtain yeah. that was torn, that separated the people of God from entering into the Holy of Holies, from entering into the presence of God. You know, they could never do that. And from the beginning of time, that's all God wanted. That's right. He wanted us to have this intimate relationship with Him, where we know Him as much as we are known by Him. Mm. And that is just amazing because the Bible speaks about him as being, I want to call it a bottomless pit of wealth and uh, wisdom and he's not a pit but you know what I'm saying it's like a bottomless well (laughs) of his goodness and his love for eternity that is who he is eternal he always was and he always will be and everything is from him and in him Mm. and is sustained by him that's what the word says and he wants us to be a part of all of that now obviously our natural minds could not fathom that Mm. but that's why we have to believe and receive and discern and be guided by our spirits because the word of god says in first corinthians chapter 6 verse 17 that when we are united to christ when we are one with christ we are one with His Spirit. So we have a connection. Our spirit and His Spirit are one, inseparably connected. Everything that is of God is in our spirit. Everything that we have is part of Him. It's just the most amazing thing. Can you believe? It it blows your mind to think that you walk in here as a child of God, a born again child of God. Mm. You have a part of you that is attached to eternity while you're walking and breathing on this earth. Yes. And that part of you can dominate your life, by the way. That's right. We'll get I, to that. I, I love the scripture, John 15, 26, that, that it speaks about, but when the comforter, now remember that word comforter, the Amplified Classic Bible says, counselor, helper, advocate, intercessor, strengthener, standby, all of those are the, the qualities, the, the personality of who he is. When he comes, whom I will send to you, from the Father. The Spirit of truth who comes proceeds from the Father. He himself will testify regarding me. Mm. Now let's just think about that for a moment. Great scripture. Here's the last two weeks we've been through a little bit of the, can I use the word, the historical timeline in such a way. Here's another beautiful point. Jesus himself finishes on the cross and then he says to the disciples, wait until you endured with power, until the Holy Spirit comes upon you, 
because they were not at that point of receiving Jesus at that point because he hadn't gone yet. That's right. Jesus leaves, he goes to the right hand of the Father in accordance with the scripture. And just think about this. I mean, this is what I loved about thinking and, and, you know, even when I went through Bible college and I was understanding the scripture, I thought to myself, imagine how beautiful this must have been. God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit sitting in heaven, all together. Jesus has fulfilled everything on earth, and he looks over at God and he says, Dad, I've done everything you wanted me to do. I've paid the price. I've been to the cross. Look, I'm, I'm here. I've come back. I'm, I'm in heaven. Holding my hands. Yeah, there Kissing it is. There's heart. all the proof. I've done everything. Now, you and I have done what we need to do. Holy Spirit, it's up to you. Go. Hand over the baton. Hand over the baton. Holy Spirit, go. Come on. Just manifest yourself to the people. Just reveal yourself. Just reveal love the people. Today. Just who we are, our personality. Take it. Cover the whole wide world once again. I mean, just think about it. That was the intention in the beginning of, of the days exactly of Adam. Right. Exactly right. Right in right. the beginning. And yeah, God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit once again say, do it. Just release my glory. Just cover. Just just be that breath, be that air, be that wind, be the, or be the atmosphere. Just cover and saturate the whole earth. And you know what? This is what I want you to understand. That moment, the earth received its reprieve. That moment, the earth was once again access, Jen, to everything. The Holy Spirit, it, He was all over. The earth was not going to be a place that the enemy dominated and controlled. He had been defeated just a little while before that when Jesus had been on the cross. Here He is, the enemy is totally defeated and the Holy Spirit He's has released. free reign around the whole and how, Andre? wide world. Through the believers. Through the believers. Through the believers. And, and you know, the saddest part of all of this is that people still today don't want the Holy Spirit. Oh, they don't understand. Yeah, they, they, they still think it's something funny and, and, and you might be watching and you might have grown up with a traditional mindset. You, you, but I want to tell you something. You are missing one of the greatest and yes. sweetest and most amazing things that God has ever given us, His Holy Spirit. Absolutely. You're missing it. Listen, I know all the jokes. I know all the things that people say. They call you happy, clappy, Pentecostal, charismaniacs. You know, you, you look at falling down. You look at laughter. You look, you think that's the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. That's not the person of who the Holy Spirit is. Very true. Yes. All right. You need to understand that is a manifestation of people being overcome. But I want you to understand who is the Holy Spirit? He wants to live inside of you. He wants to be that one that sticks closer than a brother. He wants to be that one that, that is with you when no one is with you. He wants to be all around you. He wants to encamp all over you. That's who He is. Right. And that's why you don't have to fear. You don't have to be scared. You, you, you don't have to worry or, or, or be confused. And Listen, if you love God, with your whole heart, if you love Him with everything inside of you, then I want, to be, I want to assure you there is place inside of that heart and love for the Holy Spirit because He's already there. Exactly right. And all you've got to do is allow Him to come up and take control of your life. And we're actually going to get into the practical applications of that just now. But before we do, or maybe even the program to come, because there's, time runs out when we're speaking about the Holy Spirit. Mm. There's so much to share on Him. And I also believe that as we speak, it's His presence that is already ministering to you right where you're That's at. That's right. But I, I want to really put emphasis on two aspects of the Holy Spirit, Andre, that we haven't mentioned, that the Bible speaks about Him. It is possible for the Holy Spirit to be grieved and for the Holy Spirit to be quenched. And I know that this is something that not much has been taught on, but I want you to understand what the Bible says about this. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, it says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do not offend or vex, which means to frustrate or annoy or sadden Him. 
by whom you were sealed and marked and branded as God's own secured children for the day of redemption of final deliverance through Christ from evil and the consequence of sin. Now, how on earth can we grieve or sad in the Holy Spirit? Do you see there again, if he was just a force, if he was just a, a thing, you know, a, an atmosphere, he wouldn't have a personality that could be saddened or grieved or annoyed. Right. But he is a person of the Holy Spirit and he can be grieved. He can be saddened. And you know that the verse straight after verse 30 tells us exactly how we grieve the Holy Spirit. It says this, let all bitterness, mm -hmm. indignation, which is provoked anger, let wrath, passion, rage, and bad temper, and resentment, which is anger and animosity, and quarreling, brawling, rough or noisy fighting, clamor, which is angry protests, contention, heated disagreement, and slander, which is evil speaking, abusive, or blasphemous language, let it be banished from you with all malice, that is all spite, ill will, or baseness of any kind. All of those things are the works of the flesh. Mm. That is our fleshly carnal nature that comes from the father of all lies, the devil himself. That is his nature. And when you are a born again child of God, you have been born of the spirit of God. You are a brand new creature in Christ mm. Jesus. You belong to him. You have been adopted into his family and you act like the devil and you show characteristics from your free will and choice to live in hatred and bad temper and slander and evil language when you follow after those things you grieve the holy spirit you grieve him because you are not living as someone who is born of him and that's something we need to understand as spirit-filled children of God. If we are born of the Spirit of God, we need to live as though we are His. And the Spirit of God will let you do that. But when you deliberately refuse to yield to what He's doing on the inside of you and rather allow your fleshly nature to dominate you, it grieves Him because that is not the life that He wants for you. You know, Jen, it brings into reality a reality check with where are you in your walk with God. Right. Because it doesn't mean you're not going to heaven. It just means you're blocking something that God has for you, a better way. Exactly right. A better life, a better opportunity. And if I think how many born again Christians all over the world have blocked the flow of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the person of who He is in their life because of the works of the flesh, I want to tell you, you are missing out. Mm -hmm. You're missing out on the goodness of God. You're missing out on what God wants to do for you. We don't have time to get into the next point of this even right now. But more than ever, I want you to make a decision today to say, Lord, I've messed up. I've, I've allowed these things of the flesh, uh, this anger, animosity, all of these things that you mentioned, strife and Arguing, all of this. I've allowed that to block the person of the Holy Spirit in our household. We know this when we have disagreement, <laughs> when we have strife as a family, we know it's like something lifts off the house it's we cut we cut it it feels it feels to us like what what's different this is not how we were destined to live because maybe the holy spirit won't go yeah but we stop the flow we stop the flow and that's the point and even with our children and with with them fighting with each other and them you know doing things together you you can't live your life this way because once you've tasted and seen how mm. good god is and His presence and who He is, when He's not there, you realize something's wrong. Maybe you've never tasted. Maybe you've never seen. Maybe you've blocked. Maybe you've held back. Today, I want you simply just to put it under the cross of Calvary. Just lay it at His feet. Just, just say, Lord, I, I want to develop a relationship with you, Holy Spirit, like never before. And you need to understand this is the Trinity, Father, God, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's all three in one. 
I don't, I'm not talking here to any denomination. I'm not talking to your upbringing or what, what, what uh, church you go to. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind? Because if you love Him, you've already received the Holy Spirit. Don't any longer grieve Him. Mm. Allow Him to prosper through your life. Allow Him to just bubble forth from within you. You know what? You've already received the Holy Spirit. All you've got to do is allow Him to bubble up inside of you. That's right. And Lord, right now we pray in the name Jesus of name. Jesus for Jesus every person name. listening. Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit becomes so real. Lord, I, I think of those ones in their homes all alone right now. It could be an elderly gentleman or maybe an elderly lady just sitting there. Lord, it could be a businessman, businesswoman. It makes no difference. But Lord, I just believe that you would minister. Holy Spirit, just begin to touch them. Just begin to let them realize that they've robbed, they've held back, they've stopped, they've grieved. They've, they've caused you to not operate from within them and through them because they've suppressed, they've pushed down, they've... they've They've robbed, they've held back. And Lord, today we release them in Jesus' name, trusting for a turnaround of situation, circumstance. Lord, let the Holy Spirit just bubble forth from their lives is what I pray this day in Jesus. Now say this with me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I, I do not want to grieve the Holy Spirit any longer. I don't want to grieve your Holy Spirit any longer. And today, Today, I make a decision, I make to, a decision live my life to live my life with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit in, the forefront, in the forefront, leading and leading guiding me and guiding in, my life, in my life, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Jen, that's how simple it is. That's <laughs> how simple it is. And you know what? That's all we got time for today. Just enjoy Him. Yes. Right now, that peace you're feeling, right now, that joy you're feeling right now that burden that's been removed off your life you don't have to ask him twice <laughs> you don't you, you don't have to he he's just, just arrives he just arrives man he's he's waiting, waiting there flow. right now he just wants to flow inside of you and all over you on the outside no matter what you're feeling just go in his blessing we'll be right back to say goodbye Wow, Jen, what a program we've had today. All right, nothing like the person of the Holy Spirit. Oh, you know, who could make Jesus real to you? Nobody, except for the Holy Spirit. That's right. You know, so many people know about Jesus, they know about God, but you can really know Him personally, yeah. have a personal experience with Him. All you need to do is open up your heart and by faith, receive Him. Receive right. everything He has for you. Get into His Word. Walk with Him. Talk with Him. He's right there. You don't have to beg for Him. You don't have to plead or fast for Him. When you accepted Jesus, the Holy Spirit of God came to live on the inside of you and made your spirit one with Him, a brand new creature in Christ. You are connected to eternity already. Now you have a relationship with the Almighty God and He can't wait to reveal and manifest Himself to you. That's right. Well, our time is up. Get those letters to us, all right? Email us. Tell us what a blessing this program has been and uh, fm at myfaithtv.com. fm at myfaithtv.com. We want to hear from you. We want to just know this program has been a blessing. We haven't had time for questions and answers today, but who knows what's going to happen next week. We're going to allow the Holy Spirit to move, continue to touch you, enjoy the rest of the broadcasts, and we'll see you next week, same time, same place. We love you. God bless you.